Support for LAS comes from Casa of Los Angeles, a nonprofit organization working one on one with children in the child welfare system to ensure they have support in education, health care, and housing. Just showing up is extraordinary. More at CasaLA.org. I'm Jacqueline Stewart, host of the Academy Museum podcast. This season, we're focusing on casting. And in our first episode, the drama of casting Alfred Hitchcock's 1940 classic, Rebecca. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, you know that actors are on strike against the Hollywood studios and streamers. They might soon walk out on the big video game companies. I can't afford to live near where I work. That's a common theme to this year's LA strikes. It's also bad for the environment. And you can forget about a late summer visit to Death Valley National Park. Tropical Storm Hillary made sure of that. It's Tuesday, September 5th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. You know that SAG-AFTRA is the union for actors in TV and movies. Those actors are on strike right now against the Hollywood studios and streamers. SAG-AFTRA also represents the actors in video games, and they are voting this week on whether to give union leaders the okay to call a strike against the big-name video game companies if contract talks fail. Details from LAS reporter Robert Garova. The move doesn't ensure a strike, but allows the union to have member approval to strike when it starts bargaining with video game companies later this month. The union is asking for protections around artificial intelligence, wage increases, and informed consent for use of digital replicas of actors, among other demands. Actor Eric Pisoja has played roles in the Call of Duty and Diablo franchises, and he also worked on the upcoming highly anticipated Starfield game. He thinks the 11% retroactive wage increase his union is pushing for doesn't go far enough. Are you freaking kidding me? No. No, no, no. I've done 16 video games. Giving us an 11% increase is a travesty. A spokesperson for video game companies, including Activision and Electronic Arts, said the developers hope to reach a mutually beneficial deal as soon as possible. For LAS 89.3, I'm Robert Garova. Speaking of strikes, one of the common themes is this. I can't afford to live near the place where I work. Showed up on signs carried at a Labor Day workers' rally outside the Kaiser Permanente L.A. Medical Center in East Hollywood. Now, if you live far from work, L.A.'s climate emergency reporter Aaron Stone says you have to drive far to get to work. And that's bad. Tracy McDaniel has worked at Kaiser's West Los Angeles Medical Center for 26 years. I did live a couple of blocks from the hospital prior to five years ago when everything just started going up, up, up. I couldn't afford it anymore. She says her wages haven't gone up with costs of rent. McDaniel moved from the west side to the valley in search of cheaper housing. Now she's in her car more than an hour and a half morning and evening. That's also a problem for the climate crisis. Pollution from vehicle tailpipes is California's largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. Chase Englehart with nonprofit Climate Resolve says, Around 13 percent of people that commute into the west side drive over 50 miles to work there. Englehart says affordable housing near transit or job centers is essential to both supporting workers and cutting climate pollution. For LAS 89.3, I'm Aaron Stone. The L.A. City Council today voted to move forward with an LAPD plan to set up a database to track gun violence restraining orders filed in the city and to encourage Angelinos to file more. State law allows a judge to order law enforcement to take away guns owned by those who are a danger to themselves or others, but those orders have been rare locally. California Department of Justice says of the nearly 1,400 gun violence restraining orders issued in the state in 2021, only 54 were in L.A. County. The LAPD wants to maintain a database of gun violence restraining orders that's open to both the police department and the city attorney's office. That plan also calls for working with L.A. County to increase the number of gun violence restraining orders. 
When we come back, we can forget about a late summer visit to Death Valley National Park. Support for LAS comes from Casa of Los Angeles, a nonprofit organization that organizes community volunteers to take action and advocate for children and families in LA County's overburdened child welfare and juvenile justice systems. Casa LA works to strengthen the community by ensuring that all children and families have equitable access to resources and support to thrive. Just showing up is extraordinary. You can learn how to make a difference in a child's life who needs Casa support at casala.org. It's a celebration of L.A. poetry at the Prose Bowl with Get Lit, a new three-part live event series. It's a night of spoken word performance plus snacks, sips, a DJ set, and tons of cool people to connect with in the name of poetry. Join us on September 8th with special guest poet Olivia Gatwood. It's at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at LAist.com slash events. Naloxone, the medication that can help reverse opioid overdoses, is now available to buy over-the-counter in California. It's sold under its brand name, Narcan. Spider Davila with the L.A. Community Health Project says it's great that Narcan is now widely available, but the price is still too high. At $44, if you don't have insurance that can pay for that, it's still not getting it out to everybody that it needs to, to get to. The Community Health Project says in the greater L.A. area alone this year, its teams have reversed more than 4,000 opioid overdoses. You can find Narcan at most pharmacies, and we have more about Narcan at LAS.com. Well, Tropical Storm Hillary is long gone, but it sure did a number on Death Valley National Park. It soaked the park with two inches of rain, a year's worth in one day. And park ranger Abby Wine says the runoff cracked and crumbled desert roads. The mountains here don't have a lot of plants and a lot of soft soil. Instead, they're mostly rocks and hard packed earth. All of that rain funneled down the mountains into the canyons and then across the roads. It could take till December to repair the damage and reopen the park so you can forget about any late summer visits to Death Valley. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey, Tiffany UGEA2. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, our director of content development. Our engineer is Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about our stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.